Base rate fallacy. The base rate fallacy. If someone hears that a friend is very shy and quiet, they might think the friend is more likely to be a librarian than a salesperson, even though there are far more salespeople than librarians overall, thus making it more likely that their friend is actually a salesperson. This happens because we tend to ignore the base rate and pay more attention to information pertaining only to a specific case. Conjunction fallacy. The conjunction fallacy. If I told you that Mr. JN had a heart attack, which one of these two affirmations would you think is more likely to be true? If you guessed the second one because heart attacks usually happen to older people, you chose the mathematically less probable option, as two events co-occurring are always equal to or less than the probability of either event occurring alone. Masked man fallacy. Leibniz's law states that if A and B are the same object, then A and B have all the same properties. This fallacy is an improper use of Leibniz's law, incorrectly linking what you think you know about the object or person with the actual object or person without considering that your knowledge can vary based on how it's described. Moving the goalpost, also known as raising the bar, it occurs when someone keeps changing what counts as proof or evidence to make it harder to meet their demands. Hot hand fallacy. It's the belief that a person who has experienced success with a random event has a greater chance of further success in additional attempts. This fallacy often occurs in sports, especially in basketball, where a shooter is more likely to score if their previous attempts were successful, going into what's called a streak. It's still debated if this is an actual phenomenon or a existential fallacy. In the existential fallacy, one presupposes that a class has members when one is not supposed to do so. If I said that all trespassers will be prosecuted, and from that affirmation I deduce that some of those prosecuted will have trespassed, I'm committing an existential fallacy. The first statement does not require the existence of any actual trespassers, stating only what would happen if some do exist and therefore does not prove the existence of any. Mata and Bailey. One is a rhetorical strategy where someone makes a controversial or hard-to-defend claim called the Bailey, but when challenged retreats to a more reasonable, easier-to-defend position called the Mott. Affirmative conclusion from a negative premise. This formal fallacy is committed when a categorical syllogism has a positive conclusion and one or two negative premises. The only thing that can be properly inferred from this example is that some things that are not fish cannot fly, provided that dogs exist. Definitional retreat. It consists of changing the meaning of a word when an objection is raised and saying that the new position is the one that he held all along. This makes the person avoid the appearance of having been proven wrong. Post hoc fallacy. It's the mistaken belief that if one event occurs after another, the first event must be the cause of the second. Persuasive definition. A persuasive definition is a definition that wants to look like it's trying to describe the objectively true or commonly accepted meaning of a term, while in reality it gives Gives a biased viewpoint. This fallacy is usually used in controversial topics where people might care more about influencing others than giving neutral and unbiased facts. Feedback fallacy. Believing in the objectivity of an evaluation to be used for improvement without verifying that the source of the evaluation is a party that doesn't have interest in spreading an agenda. Homunculus fallacy. It's a fallacy whereby a concept is explained in terms of the concept itself without giving a true definition or explanation. For example, explaining thought as something produced by a little thinker, a homunculus, inside the head simply identifies an intermediary actor and does not explain the product or process of thinking. If by whiskey. If by whiskey, it's an argument that sneakily supports both sides of an issue, and it's usually used by politicians to gain approval from both sides of the issue. Loaded label. It's the use of evocative terms to sneakily support a conclusion, be it on purpose or accidentally. For example, in an organic foods advertisement that says, organic foods are safe and healthy, foods grown without any pesticides, herbicides, or other unhealthy additives. The terms safe and healthy are used to fallaciously imply that non-organic foods are neither safe nor healthy. Kettle logic. This one happens when someone tries to use multiple arguments to defend a point, but the arguments are inadvertently inconsistent with each other. Lump of labor fallacy. It's a term coined to dispute the idea that reducing the number of hours employees are allowed to labor during the working day would lead to a reduction in unemployment as more people are needed. It's a fallacy because there isn't a finite amount of work, called a lump of labor, to be done within an economy, but rather there's a volatile number of jobs which changes based on multiple causes. However, there have been critiques of the idea that the concept is a fallacy. McNamara fallacy. It consists of making an argument using only quantitative observations, such as measurements and statistics, instead of also using subjective information that focuses on quality, like traits and relationships. Mind projection. 
projection, mind projection fallacy, sometimes called mistaking the map for the territory. It occurs when someone projects their own beliefs, perceptions, or mental models onto the external world, assuming that these personal perceptions are actually objective realities. It's also why it's sometimes hard to understand people's taste in subjective matters like music. This, of course, heavily applies to news as well, making it important to have access to a wide range of perspectives to avoid undetected echo chambers. Package deal fallacy. This one is probably the most common fallacy found in politics, and it consists of assuming that things often grouped together by tradition or culture must always be grouped that way. Historical fallacy. The historical fallacy occurs when a person believes that results occur only because of the process taken to obtain them. Prevalent proof fallacy. Prevalent proof fallacy. It occurs when something is considered true or right simply because many people believe it to be so instead of using actual facts to prove its validity. Proving too much. The proving too much fallacy occurs when an argument reaches a true conclusion, but mixes it with a larger and unneeded absurd conclusion that misses the main point. An example would be saying that drinking alcohol is bad because in some instances it has led to abuse. While true, it's a broader and less common point. The main point would be that alcohol causes serious health issues. It can also refer to an overly generalized conclusion, such as saying that we should ban all knives because they can be used to harm people. If that logic had to be followed, we should also ban all cars because they can be used to harm people. Begging the question. It occurs when an argument's premises assume the truth of the conclusion without actually explaining why. For example, saying that cigarettes are deadly because they can kill you would be a fallacy. Destroying the exception. This one happens when a general rule is applied to an exceptional case. For example, we can't say that since people who commit crimes are criminals, and cutting people with knives is a crime, Surgeons who cut other people are criminals. Misleading vividness. Misleading vividness. It involves describing an occurrence in vivid detail, even if it is an exceptional occurrence, to convince someone that it is more important. Overwhelming exception. It occurs when an argument is made that seems to support a general rule, but the rule is so full of exceptions that it becomes almost meaningless. Correlation implies causation. It's a faulty assumption that because there is a correlation between two variables, one causes the other. Ice cream sales and drowning incidents both go up in the summer, but it's not because one causes another. It's because people eat ice cream and swim during the summer. Reverse causation. The faster that windmills are observed to rotate, the more wind is observed. But we can't say that wind is caused by the rotation of the windmills. That would be a reverse causation fallacy. Causal oversimplification. Causal oversimplification. It occurs when a complex event or situation is attributed to a single cause, ignoring the multiple contributing factors. It's usually done because it needs less mental resources. Furtive fallacy. Furtive fallacy, and it's pretty easy getting rid of the need for an explanation as quickly as possible. This one happens when someone assumes that outcomes are the result of hidden, secretive, or malicious intentions without sufficient evidence. It's sometimes done because it's hard to conceive that a small factor might have caused a big event, and it's easier to think that there was a bigger plan behind it. Magical thinking. Magical thinking. It's the belief that unrelated events are causally connected, despite the absence of any plausible causal link between them, particularly as a result of supernatural effects. In psychiatry, however, magical thinking defines false beliefs about the capability of thoughts, actions, or words to cause or prevent undesirable events. Regression fallacy. It assumes that something has returned to its normal state because of something done while it was abnormal, while in reality it might have returned to its normal state due to natural fluctuations. Gambler's fallacy. Gambler's fallacy. It's the mistaken belief that past random events can influence the probability of future random events. It's called this way because it often occurs in gambling, where individuals believe that if something happens more frequently than normal during a given period, it will happen less frequently in the future. Argument from silence. Argument from silence. To express a conclusion that is based on the absence of statements in historical documents rather than their presence. An example would be saying something like, there are no records of ancient civilizations mentioning UFO sightings, so UFOs must not have visited Earth in ancient times. Appeal to motive. Appeal to motive. It's an argument which consists in challenging a thesis by calling into question the motives of its proposer instead of using logical facts. Ergo de Cato. Responding to criticism by saying that the critique is being done just because the critic is from another group and doesn't like ours instead of logically analyzing his statements. 
It's also used to tell people that they can leave if they don't like the current situation, instead of listening to his critics and figuring out if they might better the situation itself. Trivial Objections It's a fallacy where irrelevant and sometimes frivolous objections are made to divert the attention away from the main topic that is being discussed. Relative Privation Fallacy Dismissing an argument or complaint due to what are perceived to be more important problems. First world problems are a subset of this fallacy. I don't think you'll be able to click on the next video until time runs out. 3, 2, 1, you've lost.